Patricia McLaughlin was born on March 3, 1938, in Cheyenne, Wyoming. McLaughlin was an only child. Her lack of siblings was offset by a strong relationship with her parents and an active imagination. McLaughlin's parents were teachers and they encouraged her to read. Her mother urged her to read a book and to find out who you are. Patricia did read voraciously, sometimes discussing and acting out scenes in books with her parents. McLaughlin was also kept company by her imaginary friend Mary, who she says was real enough for me to insist that my parents set a place for her at the table. Though Patricia was creative enough to invent a friend and create elaborate fantasies, Patricia did not write stories as a child. She remembers being intimidated by the intensely personal nature of writing. She once said, I was afraid of putting my own feelings and thoughts on a page for everyone to read. This is still a scary part of writing. She lived in Wyoming and Minnesota before moving east. After graduating from the University of Connecticut, she became an English teacher. She and her hub husband, Robert McLaughlin, have three children. Indeed, McLaughlin did not begin to write until years later, at the age of 35. Married with children of her own, she kept busy by working with foster mothers at a family services agency and spending time with her family. As her children grew older, though she felt she needed to do something else, go to graduate school or go back to teaching perhaps, she once noted. McLaughlin started her successful writing career by creating picture books. Her first, The Sick Day, details how a little girl with a cold is cared for by her father. Another work, through Grandpa's eyes, explores how a young boy is taught by his blind grandfather to see the world through his other senses. Mama 1, Mama 2, a somewhat later book, takes a frank yet comforting look at a mental illness and foster parenting. In it, a girl is taken by Mama 2 while waiting for her natural mother, Mama 1, to recover from psychological problems. Encouraged by her editor, McLaughlin also started to write novels intended for a slightly older audience than her picture books. McLaughlin's first novel, author for the very first time, tells of a young boy's emotional growth during the summer he spends with his great uncle and great aunt. In an interview, McLaughlin commented that she practically enjoyed writing author for the very first time. She says, at the time, author was an immensely personal thing. I knew I was writing about a lot of me. A character and author for the very first time provided the seed for McLaughlin's best-known work, Sarah Plain and Tall. Aunt Mag, an author, was a male order bride, a woman who in past times attained a husband by answering a newspaper advertisement, as was a distant relative of McLaughlin's. In Sarah Plain and Tall, the title character answers a newspaper advertisement and as a result goes to visit a lonely widower and his children on the Midwestern Prairie. When Sarah arrives, the children take to her immediately and hope she will stay and marry their father. When one day Sarah goes into town, the children and their father are worried that Sarah will not come home and will take a train back to her home. But when Sarah does come home from town on time for dinner, the children start to cry because they were happy. When Sarah asks them what was wrong and they tell her that they thought she was going to leave, Sarah says that as much as she misses her home, she would miss them more. Considered a pigment and finely shaped tail, Sarah Plain and Tall garnered whisper critical acclaim. McLaughlin received a Newbery Medal for the novel in 1986, which goes to the most distinguished contribution to the American literature for children. Sarah Plain and Tall was later turned into a movie starring Glenn Close and Christopher Walken. McLaughlin's first novel after winning the Newbery was The Facts and Fictions of Meanie Pratt. An 11-year-old Minnie tettering on the edge of adolescence finds herself confronted with numerous changes as she strives to develop a vibrato. While she practices her cello to attain this dream, Mina also longs for her eccentric mother, a writer, to be more like a mother. In the midst of all this appears Lucas Elbury, a violinist who has the quiet and peaceful home Mina desires. Lucas, on the other hand, is fascinated with the unusual ways of Mina's family, and the two experience their first romance. Patricia has won many awards for the books she has written. She has won the Golden Kite Award in 1980 for author for the very first time, which is given for excellence in children's literature. She has also won the ALA Award in 1980 for author for the very first time, 1984 for Unacclaimed Treasures, 1984 for Sarah Plain and Tall, and 1988 for the Facts and Fictions of Mina Pratt. 
Patricia's genre is young adult fiction, as well as picture books. Patricia now lives in Williamsburg, Massachusetts with her husband. Patricia is also a board member of the National's Book of Literacy Alliance, a national not-for-profit that actively advocates for literacy, literature, and libraries. Patricia is heartened by children's reactions to her work. She once noted that it's hugely gratifying to know that kids all over read what I write. Affirming the importance of encouraging young writers, Patricia visits schools to speak with students and give writing workshops. In my experience, children believe that writers are like movie stars. I am often asked if I arrived in a limousine, McLaughlin remarked. I admit that sometimes I am a little flattered at the exalted idea kids have about writers. But more importantly, I feel it's crucial that kids who aspire to write understand that I have to rewrite and revise as they do. Ours is such a perfectionist society, I see too many kids who believe that they don't get it right at the first time, they aren't writers. When asked what advice she would have for beginning writers, McLaughlin commented in language arts, I would certainly say only write books if children, if you really love children's books and want to do it. Writing for children is special because I think children read with a great true belief in what they're reading. The other thing is to read. One must understand the far reaches of children's books because they're really about many of the same subjects as adults are concerned with. Don't be condescending. I hate the didactism that sometimes comes through in children's books. I would read and read and read. There is no better model than a good book.